Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new recommendation video. You guys probably didn't notice, but I took a break from filming. I bulk filmed a lot and I've still been vlogging, so I've still had videos going up as per usual, but I haven't sat down to film in a little while. So I'm really excited to make this video. Today we're going to be talking just about some adult books that I've loved lately and I want to recommend to you guys. I actually made one of these videos back when I like first started my channel years and years ago. I think it's still public. If it is, I'll link it down below in the description. I haven't watched it in a long time, so honestly, it's probably very cringy at this point. But I do remember which books I talked about in that video and I still stay and buy all of those recommendations. I think they're all great books. So there are no repeats on this list. These are all new recommendations for you. Most of them are fiction. A couple of them are nonfiction. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you can probably guess the kinds of genres because I read a lot of the same kinds of books. But I think there's a pretty diverse variety here. Hopefully you find something that sounds interesting to you. I think all of these were five out of five stars. Maybe one of them was a four star book, but still highly recommend all of these. I'll have them all linked down below in the description if you want to go check them out. And as always, feel free to leave some recommendations down below in the comments. I always love to see them. But other than that, let's just get straight into the recommendations for today. Also, I just want to talk to you about my coffee really fast. You can tell that the weather has taken a turn because we've switched unfortunately, off of the iced coffee. I would drink iced coffee all year long if it wasn't two degrees outside. But I tried something new today. It's still the same old latte with almond milk and I like the blonde espresso. But instead of just regular vanilla, I have three pumps of sugar-free vanilla and I have one pump of the cinnamon dolce or whatever. It has just like the perfect amount of fall in it would recommend. Anyway, the first book I'm going to recommend to you, you might recognize if you were around for my college vlogs because I raved about this book for a while. I had to read this for one of my classes actually. That is Semiosis by Sue Burke. This is science fiction and I believe it's the first book in a series. It might be a duology. There's at least one sequel coming out and I loved everything about this book. This was my favorite book that I read in that class. So we're following this group of people who are going to colonize a new planet after they've just basically had enough of Earth. Like I'm pretty sure Earth is still livable but violence has become like super super bad and people have just decided to leave and on this new planet we learn that the plants kind of run the game the plants are super smart and it's so interesting i love the idea of this how the plants can like interact with each other and how they can like produce certain chemicals in the fruit that the people eat in order to influence what the people do. Basically the plants are like smarter than anything else in this book and it's so interesting. And I also really like the way that the book is told. So it's told in different generations so we're not following the same characters the whole time which I feel like can be a hit or miss but this book really does it well. And so instead of chapters it's told in like the first generation and then we skip to the second generation which is their kids and the third generation which is their kids. Sometimes we still see from past characters you know if they're still alive when we're following the next generation but it's interesting because we get to see how this society develops from the original people when they land on this new planet to start colonizing to you know 10 generations later what the society looks like now how they're dealing with all of these different crazy plant species and stuff i just thought it was a super fascinating way to write this book i ended up enjoying reading from all of the different characters the only thing that you run the risk of with writing a book like this is you don't become you know super attached to any of the characters because you don't spend very much time with them but the world itself was what i found the most intriguing and it's interesting because some of the plants are like legit characters and they're so interesting. Basically I've never read anything like this and I would highly highly recommend it. I haven't read the sequel. I don't know if the sequel's out yet. I feel like it's coming out soon but whatever the case is I need to read that. The next book I'm going to recommend is actually more of like a new adult but it's one of my favorites that I've read this year so I figured we should talk about it anyway and that was Verity by Colleen Hoover. If you know who Colleen Hoover is you know she writes young adult romance books. This is not like her other books. I mean there is still romance in here but this is more of a thriller and I've enjoyed this way more than I've enjoyed any of her other books. So basically our main character is a young writer living in New York and she's struggling financially and her mom has recently passed away from a chronic illness. She's basically desperate for money at this point and she's presenting with this opportunity to be a ghostwriter for a famous author to finish the series because that famous author was in an accident and can no longer continue. So she says yes. She goes to that famous author's like crazy fancy manor in the middle of nowhere and stays with her family for a couple of days while she goes through that author's office to see if she can find like outlines or some kind of plan for the last couple of books in the series before she starts writing. And while she's there, she finds this autobiography manuscript in the woman's office that's never been published. No one else has ever seen it. And she starts to learn some really disturbing things about this family, which she is now living with in the middle of nowhere. I love 
loved this book. I'm 100% recommending it because I love the ending so much. So obviously I don't want to say too much about that. I will say the book got like its slow parts and stuff. And so basically I'm telling you to push through it because the ending is worth it. There are some like graphic sex scenes and stuff in here. So just be aware of that if you don't like that. If you've read some of Colleen Hoover's other books, you probably know exactly what to expect. But the mystery and the ending make this book 100% worth the read highly recommend. The next book I'm going to be recommending is a fantasy and that is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Don't let the cover fool you. For whatever reason this cover just kind of looks like YA to me but it's not. It's an adult fantasy and it's basically a fairy tale retelling of Rumpelstiltskin and it was phenomenal. So our main character Miriam is the daughter of a moneylender and her dad kind of sucks at his job. Like he lends all of these people money and then he never asks for his money back and so people just take advantage of him and his family ends up being the one suffering while other people are like borrowing money for him for things they don't even really need. And so Miriam one day is just sick of this and she decides to take over his job and go demand all of their money back and she soon comes to find out that she's really good at this. She's a really smart businesswoman and she's not a pushover like her father and so she starts getting all of their their money back and doesn't really stop there. She starts to make a lot of money just like through smart business decisions and this catches the attention of the king of the Starks. My interpretation is they're kind of like fae and they're obsessed with gold and so they think she honestly has this magical ability to turn silver into gold and so they start bringing her bags of silver with the expectation that she's going to turn it into gold when really she doesn't have a magical power she's just been really smart. And the book actually follows a couple of different women. We have Miriam and then we also have a couple of other storylines. One of them is the girl who's working in Miriam's house to pay off the debt of her father. Another is a princess who's about to get married off to this really cruel man. And I just thought this book was so intricately plotted. I loved all three of the women whose stories we were following. I found them all equally interesting and just strong, badass female characters. I loved the world in here. It just felt like an old school fairy tale. Like I feel like I should have been like sitting around a fire and like telling stories to people. Like that's the kind of vibe you get from reading this book. It's definitely slower paced. It's not this like action packed thriller. It's a slow moving, dense, lush fantasy, but I think that's actually a strength of it. I really, really enjoyed this. I would highly, highly recommend the audiobook. There's just something, I don't know, even more magical about hearing someone read the story to you. I know she has another fairy tale retelling. I think it's called Uprooted and I'm really interested to pick that one up now just because she's such a freaking good writer. This was so well written and just so unique and creative. Like I'm mind blown by this world. Like it was so convincing. It was so good. Highly recommend if you like fantasy. The next book I'm gonna be recommending, I have like hair all over me. Does anyone else just like shed a ton this time of year? The next book I'm gonna be recommending is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is a thriller and everyone keeps telling me I need to read more of his books and I'm aware I'm gonna get to it, but this is the only one that I've read so far. So this is a thriller set in New York City. Our main character, this poor woman has a horrible life and and horrible luck. She is an orphan. She's recently single. She's unemployed now. She's homeless. Like basically she's hit rock bottom and she finds this ad in a newspaper to become an apartment sitter and the deal looks like it's going to be too good to be true. Like it's this luxury historic building in Manhattan and they're going to pay her thousands of dollars just to live there for a couple of months. But since she's short on other options, she decides to take the job. But this apartment building kind of is notorious for bad things happening in it. There are all kinds of crazy stories since it was built of weird things happening here. And part of the deal of her being an apartment sitter is she has to follow a couple of rules. She can't spend any nights away from the apartment. She can't have any visitors and she's not supposed to talk to anyone who lives there. This was really fun. I listened to this in an audiobook. I would totally recommend the audiobook version. It was very fast paced. I finished this in like 24 hours. Personally, I really liked the plot twist. I liked the ending. I've seen that it's been pretty hit or miss with people. So I think it just depends on what your expectations are going in. But I thought it was an interesting angle that it took. Like I thought I had it figured out about halfway through. And so I was kind of bored like, oh, I know where this is going. But then it ended up pleasantly surprising me. The writing style is just so easy to read. Like it's almost like invisible. Like you don't even notice it. You're just like flying through the story and I love writing styles like that. Our main character is honestly kind of stupid and that's a little infuriating but overall I think this is a pretty solid thriller especially if you're just looking for something that you can read in one sitting and personally I find it very creepy and disturbing just by like 
what I find scary. So again, I, I'm trying not to spoil it for you, but it's hard to talk about this book without spoiling it. So I think that's all I'm gonna say on this one. The next book I'm gonna be recommending is a, another fantasy, and that is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This is the first book in a trilogy. And this one is pretty different from Spinning Silver. I would say this one is a lot darker. It's more violent. Our main character is training at this school to become an assassin to avenge her family that was all murdered when she was a child. But what I find the most interesting about this story is the magic system like there are some people only a couple who have these like shadow powers basically where they can manipulate shadows they can like go through shadows they have these like shadow pets that like follow them around that drink their fear so they're not afraid of anything anymore the narration style of this i found very amusing it kind of breaks the fourth wall you have a narrator who's talking directly to the reader the entire time the book has these like weird footnotes throughout it which are kind of like snarky and sarcastic or just offer like a little more information about the world. I will warn you that I think this book is kind of slow moving at the beginning. The first 100 pages I found really confusing and just kind of slow, but I would highly recommend the audiobook for this one. I think it makes the book a lot more enjoyable and it makes the first 100 pages pretty easy to get through. And I also just straight up really enjoyed the audiobook. I haven't finished the rest of the series yet. I definitely want to get to it eventually. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about that. I'm going to read them, I promise. This one definitely exceeded my expectations. The next book I'm going to recommend to you is nonfiction, and that is I Miss You When I Blink by Mary Laura Filippo. This is actually one of my all-time favorite books that I've read this year. Surprisingly so. I picked it up on a whim. It's a collection of essays and I just adored it. I went back and forth. I was reading the physical book and I listened to the audiobook half the time and honestly both of them were great. I would recommend both of them. The narrator's voice is just super pleasing to listen to. It's very pleasant. But I also just really enjoyed the writing style. Like this woman knows how to write. It's not like like crazy flowery or anything like that. I just think the way she puts sentences together are very pretty, but like in a subtle way. Like it's not overindulgent, it's just very well done. But yeah, it's basically just a collection of essays about her life and her struggles and sort of her like midlife crisis and not really knowing where she wants to go with her life and stuff. And I just found it so honest and relatable and just straight up enjoyable to read. If you like I don't know, like talk shows and just like hearing people talk and just like learning people's stories and things like that. I think you'll really enjoy this. I honestly can't put my finger on why I loved it so much, especially because I don't usually read books of essays, but this is one of my favorite books that I've read this year. So please just give it a try. <laughs> sort of in a similar vein, my next recommendation is also a nonfiction book. And that is Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Godlib. This book is written by a therapist who goes through this sort of traumatic breakup. And so she starts seeing a therapist and we're jumping back and forth between like her life and her talking to her therapist and then also her reflecting on a couple of different clients that she's had in the past. One of them is this like narcissist guy whose marriage is falling apart. One of them is this young newlywed woman who is dying of cancer and I am drawing a blank on who the third client was. Oh it was like an old woman who was terrible to her children growing up and now she's in like her 70s or something and she's found sort of a second family with her neighbors and she's trying to redeem herself. And so this is another one that if you're just like interested in people and people's stories I think you'll really like. I found it really interesting because she's sitting in therapy and every time he like asks her something or says something she's like analyzing in her head like oh I know why he's asking this, oh I know what he's looking for here, oh I know how he's gonna interpret what I just said and so she's like analyzing herself from his perspective. It was a good like insight into therapy and how it works and what they look for and things like that which I don't really know anything about it so I just thought it was very interesting. I think when I reviewed this book I said that like reading this made me feel like I was the one getting therapy and honestly yeah it was just a really weird but unique reading experience. I've never experienced anything like this but if you're at all like interested in therapy or psychology I think you'll really enjoy this one. Again would recommend the audiobook for this as well. Okay I've got two more recommendations and both of them are thrillers. So the next one is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I just finished this recently. Recently as in like yesterday or maybe it was the day before but still. So this book is about a live-in nanny who's working for this family in the Scottish Highlands who have this gigantic manor which they have renovated to be a smart house. Like everything in the house can be controlled from an app. There's cameras everywhere and the book actually starts with our main character writing to a lawyer in prison in begging him to hear her out because she has not been able to explain how one of the children that she was watching ended up dead. This is another one I would totally recommend the audiobook for. Even though this is a thriller, I definitely wouldn't say this book is fast-paced, but it's entertaining and intriguing throughout, so it's never like it 
dragged anywhere. It just wasn't like a keep you on the edge of your seat kind of book, but it was sort of chilling and creepy. It's like a slow build horror movie kind of thing where you know something is going to happen, but you don't know what. This is another one that I think has an ending that redeems the book 100%. I've heard really mixed feelings about it. Some people really hated the ending. Personally, I loved it. I was listening to the audiobook and for the whole last hour of the audiobook, I just like sat still and stared into space because I just like was processing all of these things that were happening. It was so good. It was so good. It does leave it a little bit open-ended, so be aware of that if you hate sort of vague endings, but I think it was done well. It has a really good atmosphere throughout, a really good vibe. Like it is really creepy and I didn't find it predictable at all. So would highly recommend this one for sure. And then the last book that I have to talk about, this is also a thriller that I've read recently this year, and that is The Arrangement by Robin Harding. This one is not like masterful or mind-blowing or incredibly unique or anything like that. I think this one is more of like a guilty pleasure kind of fluffy thriller, if such a thing even exists. This is about a young art student living in New York City who ends up making a sugar daddy arrangement with a married man because she needs money. She doesn't know that he's married and we're jumping back and forth between their two different point of views and I actually really loved that. I thought it was so interesting to see what the sugar daddy was thinking. Like it really really helps the development of this story and I like this book again because it's just kind of like trashy guilty pleasure. I read this in 24 hours. I couldn't put it down but also both of the characters at least I found incredibly unlikable which I think is actually kind of fascinating. I like books with unlikable characters. They're both just kind of crazy honestly. But it was also just like a fascinating insight into the sugar baby, sugar daddy, like culture. There's so much more to it that I had no idea about. And so you get into like all of the niches and the things that they do and the different kinds of arrangements that people make. And I knew nothing about any of this and I found it fascinating. Definitely fast paced. I don't think the title or the cover does it justice, but if you just want something fun and something you'll probably read in one day, I would highly recommend this one. So yeah, those are all of the adult books that I'm going to be recommending to you guys today. If you've read any of these, feel free to let me know down in the comments what you thought of them. I would be super interested to hear your opinion. Or as always, feel free to leave some more recommendations down below in the comments. I'm always looking for recommendations and you guys tend to recommend really good books. Like I have found so many good books through your comments. So thank you. But yeah, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up because it helps out my channel a lot. Maybe subscribe to my channel if you're new here. I put up at least two new videos every single week and I would love to have you stick around. My Instagram and all my other stuff, like my freelance services, my second channel, all those links are down below in the description if you feel so inclined to look down there. But I think I'll just see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye. So hit me. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With